So I am Napisa Taharbhai. I am Dr. Tahar's wife. But more than that, I am Nikhil and Anushka's mom. And my greatest joy is being a grandmom to my grandson Kai, who is the joy of my life right now in my old age. I went vegetarian in around 2003, but I became vegan in 2015. Till then I was doing cheese and uh, things like that. What made you go vegetarian? So one day I picked up my daughter from her school and we lived in a small town, Gadsden. And apparently I was driving behind a truck that had these chicken piled one on top of another. And my daughter is like, oh my God, poor thing. I said, well, I mean, yeah, I felt bad too because I cannot imagine it's a living thing. And we are just piling it like it didn't exist. But at that time, I did not exactly go uh, uh, vegetarian. But soon after that, I, I was going through National Geographic and the iPhones had just come out and somebody had taped as to how they treat the cows and, you know, the way they slaughter them. I was just horrified. So I, well, and I showed it to my daughter and promptly both of us said, we don't want to be a part of this cruelty. If, if somebody wants to eat meat, they're welcome. I can control other people's life, but I can control what I can do in my own life. We promptly went vegetarian. And I was vegetarian till 2015 when uh, my husband started becoming vegan and he looked into all this. And then to my horror, I realized, am I entitled to have the milk that was meant for the calf? No, I was not. And I like cheese a lot, but well, that is one of the things I decided I, I just don't want to be part of all this. I mean, as long as I was doing it out of ignorance, not knowing that I'm taking away a calf's milk or the cow is being given hormones to produce the amount of milk she's doing and her udders are almost going to the ground. I mean, that, that wasn't what I want. And I tell people, now it is up to each individual. So my becoming vegetarian or a vegan was never health related. It was more related to cruelty to animals. And I love animals and they don't have a voice. So some of us have to raise our voices and say, hey, listen, enough is enough of this. On top of that, we are ruining our planet. I mean, I want it saved for my grandbaby when he grows up because it's a very pretty place. We have taken it for granted. Everything is taken for granted in this fast-moving life, and I don't agree. I want to stop by, smell a rose, admire something beautiful. This may come as a shock to some people, but I think by nature, men are cruel. We men are cruel. You think by nature we're cruel, but... You saw something and you decided you didn't want to be cruel. Could it be maybe by nature we're not cruel, we're just learning something that's against our nature? Well, the thing is, in my time, I'm talking about 2003 when all this iPhones and the information was not that great. So, yes, I would forgive that ignorance. But at this point in time, really, do we have a reason to be that ignorant? When we have so much on our media, there's so much going around, we know it. I mean, a handful of people still may be in uh, farms and remote villages or whatever. But most of us are well versed with our uh, technology. We get our stuff on the phones. We, uh, they're telling us on the television, okay, fine, you can't access your phone at my age. I'm not too savvy, but I still can do certain things. I go on my YouTubes, I find out stuff. So I think most of us are capable and I wouldn't call myself tech savvy. I get lost in it. So yes, if you don't know about it, of course, I cannot blame. But if you do know and still if you choose to, that is choosing knowingly, right? We do have plenty of other things that we can eat. So why go that route? It is bad for the animals, it's bad for us, it's bad for the planet. 
How much more do we need to know? Prior to going vegetarian, were you eating a lot of meat, eggs and dairy? Uh, generally, no. Okay. Generally, I was not that much of a meat eater, but I, I, I definitely never ate a steak because I just didn't care for the meat part of it. I did do some chicken. And uh, eggs I used to do. Because when you fry stuff, especially in Indian recipes, you do dip it in the egg to bind it. So I used to do a lot of eggs and things like that. But I think it is equally good if you use gram flour instead for, to bind stuff. Or flaxseed. Flaxseeds. Any, any flour will work to bind your stuff. Maybe the reason why people aren't getting it is because they are eating more meat, eggs, and dairy than you were. Because it doesn't sound like you were eating a lot, and it, maybe it was easier for you to make that connection. I think a lot of us are primed up to the point of accepting veganism. Whereas other people might see that as something threatening what they've done their whole life. And that, that loss could equate to the kind of denial or anger or you know, confusion and bartering and all these things that people go through when they lose a, a behavior. You know, maybe there's this opposition there because they're just so much more dependent on it than you were. Maybe it was a little easier for you. No, it is not because the thing is that my family was a non-veg. So I was cooking non-veg every day because my husband was a non-veg, my kids were non-veg, till my daughter and I became vegetarian, then we were eating the same thing. No, so I was used to vegetarian, so it, it is difficult because I was used to cooking non-vegetarian things, so I really had to put my brain to work to figure out things I, that can be vegetarian and palatable initially. Later on it became second nature but yes no it was a very big effort on my part to just but I just didn't want to do it so if I had to eat just salad so be it I went to Subway and I had a vegetarian sandwich but only thing is I used to put cheese without realizing that what I'm doing and in that I am forgiving to people because if you don't know uh, the dairy industry, then you're ignorant about it, you know. But again, ignorance is not an excuse. So I will not excuse myself for doing for so long, but I will say I was ignorant and that was my misfortune. At the time you, you were going vegetarian, your husband wasn't at all and he's a doctor. So did he give you a hard time about that? Oh yes, because like everybody else, like you're taught in your medical schools, he used to tell me, where are you getting your protein from? And I had no answer because I'm not a medical person. I didn't know where I'm getting my protein from. All I knew is I'm feeling better. And even if I'm not getting my protein, so be it. I'm not going to take a life to get my protein. And I didn't know. I, I used to do a lot of nuts and fruits. Anyway, I was a very big fruit eater. So, you know, it did compensate a whole lot. And even now, my husband, every morning, he does a smoothie with uh, beetroots and uh, pears and uh, grapes and chia seeds and everything else. I drink that. But the other day I just told him, I said, just don't do it for me. Because you are taking away, it's, it's just a mush in my mouth. I don't even know what fruit I'm eating here. So, and he said that, well, beetroots have uh, some, I don't know what, some nutrition, neurophytins or whatever it was. And I said, well, then I can eat it with my meals. But I just like to have my fruits the way they are and enjoy it. Almost 10 years you were vegetarian before he even got on board. Right. Was he eating meat, eggs and dairy here in the home while you were just on a different plate? This I hold even to this day that I will do what I can, but I'm not going to force myself on anybody else. So if people came home and like his partner is a big meat eater. So if they came home, yes, I did cook for them. Because it has to come to me, anything enforced is never as good as when it comes from within. When a person wants to do and is motivated, you get a greater result than you telling somebody. Because I think 
we all like our independence. That is why people fight, that is why nations fight, because we all need that freedom. You need to give somebody the freedom of choice. If that person is given a choice, reason out why you are doing it. And if they're willing to take it and make it their choice, I think my results will be far greater than me imposing and saying, hey, listen, it's wrong, don't do it. It doesn't work. Who maybe had a harder time? Was he having a harder time with you not eating meat? Or could it have been that maybe you were just having a little bit of a harder time with him eating meat? Was it easier for him or was it easier for you? It was a little bit easier for him because Indian, a lot of Indian cooking, you do have vegetarian recipes. And lentil was every day. That is a staple. Like an, for an American, when they come home, they want their burger. For an Indian, we always have dal and rice. So that was a very uh, fundamental food, that which I used to make every day. And if he wanted a little bit of chicken or something on the side, I made it for him. But uh, then he, he was the only person who was eating it. And I don't think that was very enjoyable. So I think it was harder on him that way. But I, I made sure that I made some kind of lentil or beans or something. So there was always two things then. And if I didn't feel like cooking that day, then it would be just vegetarian. That was tough luck to him. You later went vegan. What was the catalyst that made you go vegan? So when my husband went vegan, that was a time I, w I thought, well, I mean, it's just eggs and things like that till he started showing me about the hormones that the cows are given you know, about the chicken being artificially inseminated to make eggs. And then one day he told me that, you think the, the cow is making milk for you? I don't think so. That was the time it clicked, that milk was never for me. We are the only species in the world, uh, in, on planet, who drink another species' milk. Once you're weaned off milk, your mother's milk, you're weaned off, especially when I saw the pictures of these cows being given and those steel gadgets put on their udders to milk them and then lacerations. I was like, eh, doesn't work. Did he go vegan before you? Yes. Did he go vegetarian before that or did he just go straight to vegan? He went vegetarian and then I think in a very short time he went vegan because once he started reading the stuff, he went vegan. And then when he showed me all this, I was till then I was still doing eggs and I was not a big milk drinker, but most Indian uh, desserts have milk. One way or the other, it has milk content. And I, I have a sweet tooth, confession. So I used to do the Indian desserts. But then when I realized, well, in a way it helped me, right? I gave up sugar too, to a very great extent. I love chocolates, but chocolate I gave up for a very different reason. It was for my grandbaby. When he had gone sick, of course, my husband laughs at me that you're trying to trade with God. But I told God, I love chocolate so much. I'll just give it up. Please don't let anything happen to my grandchild. And I gave up chocolate about now. He's 10 years old. So I gave up nine years back. This was when he was about seven or eight months. And I've never touched it. So half the things on that aisle are gone for me. What's wrong with chocolate, though? No, there's nothing wrong. This was a bargaining chip with the God I made. I mean, this is what my husband was laughing, that you are telling God, hey, listen, you give me this, in turn, I'm going to give you that. Oh, okay. So you were making a sacrifice. I was making a sacrifice <laughs> that I will not eat because I was a cho closet chocolate eater. Another thing is milk. See, if you're vegan, you don't do chocolate, but I, I gave up chocolate for a different reason. I, I hear great things about chocolate when it's pure cocoa. Or oh, yes. It's very antioxidant rich. I, hopefully you could at least have a little bit of that, right? <laughs> I can't because it is the cocoa part of it that I love. No, but yes, you are right. Because when we went to Peru, there were these big blocks of uh, chocolates. And since everybody was buying, I got it. I got one for my son, one for my daughter. My daughter promptly returned. She said, this is hard. This is bitter. And I don't know what to do with this. And I'm like, really? Because I don't need chocolate. I couldn't taste it. 
but my son took it because he great he used to grate and put it in his coffee but it was pure cocoa and that is not that is not good so you beat your husband to vegetarianism yes by many years but then he co he goes vegetarian and then he beats you to veganism right but but not by very long right no not very long because yeah. the moment he again I think I will take back the cruelty that men are cruel. I think I was I don't think I'm a cruel person, but I was ignorant. Yeah. I remember you saying you saw these chickens on a truck. Was there anything that you saw regarding dairy that helped get rid of dairy or was it just hearing your husband I did go see National Geographic is great in that way. So I did go on their shows and then I I saw how it was so unnatural to have udders that large and how they milk these cows this is not human i mean this is not being kind to them just because they can't talk and that irks me a lot i mean if i had my way say if i if i was like you a videographer but they would throw me out of that farm immediately but i would go there do the video and at my own cost put it on the television as an ad is this what you want you have other family members that are vegetarian right mm -hmm. do you have any other ones that are vegan my daughter is more or less vegan but not 100% i don't think she does milk she doesn't do eggs she doesn't do cheese but i think time and again she does chocolate and things like that. So she would not be called a 100% vegan. Mm -hmm. They do have some really great tasting yummy vegan chocolate bars. Definitely. I get them. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You just got to look for like a V logo on it or make sure there's no whey or dairy or whatever in the ingredients. But, oh. Yeah, yeah. What happens during the holidays? You know, you're around other family members. Is there ever a problem there because you and your husband are vegan? And how do you deal with family members that are not? Do you try to encourage them? Do you just ignore them? Do you just not visit them? Do you bring them food? No, we don't ignore them. We don't uh, try to convert them. It's just a gentle hint sometimes. And if people want to, like I said, it's no sense telling people what to do because who am I to say that? it has to come from the person them because i was born a non veg when you go to india is it hard to be vegan in india sometimes because the thing is vegetarian is plentiful but they do eat ghee and ghee is clarified butter so a lot of their cooking is done in uh, ghee so i have to be careful at that time and let them know that please use oil and i think that clarified butter does add a certain amount of taste but also it clogs your arteries much more than oil does sometimes it is hard but then for a person like me i think the biggest advantage was that food is never the focus of my life for me if you just give me some bread and whatever i'll have my bread and coffee if push comes to shove and like for my sweet tooth i'll go and have my cheerios My neighbor was laughing when I told her. She said, "Nephi, you have sweet tooth. What do you eat?" And I said, "Well, I munch on Cheerios at times." The problem is, I don't even know whether marshmallows, like even the Rice Krispies, with the marshmallows, but I don't know whether the marshmallow has got milk. So till I find out that, I'm not going to have it. There's a way to make vegan ghee. Have you tried to do that? Seriously, how do you make vegan ghee because basically they take the cream of the milk, they churn it, they take out that butter and then basically they boil it till it is clarified. Then they strain it. The clarified thing that is left which uh, sort of uh, hardens up if you leave it in a cool temperature is ghee. So how do you make vegan ghee? Like this cheese I've got It has got coconut and I think I'm sure it has some soy product but to me it comes close enough to a cheese. I at least I will never say everybody but I forget is sometimes the affordability factor and the time factor. An average middle class person is working 9 to 5 job has two children homework to be done 
you know, there is laundry. There's so much that has to go for that one mother who's trying to cope up with her job, children, homework, this, that, housework. It becomes difficult because it's not readily available. So people try to go to a fast food joint because even money-wise you are restrained, right? Do you think it's expensive to be vegan? To a degree, yes. Mm -hmm. Because if you are a vegan, no matter what you, even the cheese, what I got, is costing two or three times as much as what you would get your regular cheese at. So yes, it is expensive. Yes, it takes time and effort. And I think you have to be a little bit forgiving. So that is such a contrarian statement to what I first said. But I'll tell you what, I'm a woman and I'm allowed that. Some would argue like dry beans, dry grains, these things are very inexpensive and you don't necessarily have to get organic if you can't afford it. The benefits still outweigh the risk. Like seeds, you can sprout them. That could be less expensive than buying like broccoli. And it's easy and you can do it all year round. What you're talking about though is buying products. That's expensive. But just eating whole plant foods, that's affordable. Anybody can do that. That right? is perfectly affordable. I, I go to Walmart and buy these packets of 15 beans and that soup is delicious. In fact, let me tell you. So Akil's brother came to visit us and he lives in Pittsburgh. He's two years older than Akil. And he has pulmonary fibrosis. It's a condition which is difficult to breathe. It is a progressive disease. So they've come out with this, some medications that can stop it in its track, but you can reverse it. So his wife had said that because of this medication, he can't take in too much fiber. He came here and that day I had made mixed vegetables, which was spinach, potatoes, peas, all sorted with the Indian spices and onions and garlic and all that. And I had made the seven bean soup in two days. And I'm telling you, this is not an exaggeration. In two days, he stayed here. He had this kind of food. And you know what? There was no stomach upset. There was no growling in his stomach, nothing. And they went back home vegan. And he's feeling better. So first it was, you, I can't take that much fiber because my stomach won't take it. Then when given the fiber, he says, I'm he perked up in two days. So do you have any other success stories you'd like to share? I wouldn't call it success, but you know, the nicest thing is that my grandson is now not 100% because he's a kid and he's in school and he was brought up with chicken. But he has started being conscious about it and he will say, no, I don't want milk. I do know as he grows older, when he has better choices, at least he will lead a healthy lifestyle and he also knows that mama and nana do not like being cruel to animals and therefore we don't eat meat. Do you try to talk to him about that ever when you see him? Oh yeah. Oh, I, I, I always tell him that you've got to give voice to those who do not have voice because that is a moral duty as human beings. You treat children well because they can not fend for themselves. You treat animals well because they don't have a voice. Do they not have feelings? Oh, they do have feelings. So you have these kind of conversations with him? Oh, yes. That's great. And when he was little, uh, till he was about six years old, he used to spend quite some time with me. Now he's bogged down with his homework and his activities, so he, he will not sleep here. But normally, weekends he would sleep with me. And what we had, the great thing going was our nightly talks. He so looked forward to it, he would be like, Nana, are we going to have a night talk? And I would say, yes. So I would talk and talk and he would ask some question till he has got off to sleep. It's a young mind, you know, how you train that child. You have to instill in a child kindness, humanity, being good, working hard, coming up the right way. Because like I always say, I told him once, I said, you know, money is good because it lets you do so many things. And he says, oh, yeah, like you can do with us. And I said, yes. But I said, if money is everything or money becomes your master, that will be the wrong thing because then money will guide you, your conduct. 
So you have to have a balanced sky as to how you want to make your money. It has to be done rightly and serve the right purpose. Other than that, money becomes evil and useless. You mentioned that your husband was in his 60s 10 years ago, right? It's inappropriate to ask what your age is, but... I'm 70. I just turned 70 in... Uh, so I was 1952 born, so I just became 70. Oh, wow. So you look great for 70. Thank you. Um, I'm curious, do you... Are you a triathlon like your husband? Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, do you do any kind of yoga or anything? Yoga, I do. Uh, I do exercise. Lately, it has become a little bit sporadic because... I think I'm 70, maybe my body needs a little rest for two days and one day I will exercise, but I'm getting there because I used to exercise regularly and do my stretching regularly. I don't know what has happened of late. I do one day, I don't do one day, and another day I don't do and I guess, well, it is also part of aging, right? I mean, I do get tired. so. Time and again, I will do, but no, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm no athlete. I don't know that that's necessary anyways. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it depends again on your personality. My husband is an overachiever. I'm not an overachiever. So after you went vegetarian, did you notice any changes? And then when you went vegan, did you notice any changes with your body or your mind or your emotions? So the vegetarian part of it, I can comment a whole lot because it was such a long time ago. It was for a different reason. So I was, and my children were young. So I was busy with my things. So I, I cannot comment on what changes uh, happened when I became vegetarian. But yes, when I went to vegan, oh my God, I always thought being distended was, you know, part of after eating. Little did I realize that all the troubles were due to the milk, that I could not tolerate. I was lactose intolerant. If you're uncomfortable enough, long enough, that is part of life. That's how we take it, right? That really, uh, milk, not having milk was like God sent. Any other changes? I became more agile. So I'm not a morning person. But I do perk up by 10, 11. My sleep is all gone and I'm uh, this thing. But yes, the energy level has definitely increased. And I think part of it is it's all so connected, right? Because if, if you are distended and if you are bloated because you've had coffee with milk in the morning, okay, immediately you've got your reaction of being distended. Now you're lethargic. We have this strange way, you know, we find excuses and we say, you'll always find something to blame for your shortcoming. Do you have any regrets? Life is too short for me to have regrets, no. But I feel, okay, be happy from the day you started what you started. Why have regrets? It's a negative emotion. Why didn't you go vegan sooner? See, in a way, because of my upbringing in India, women always put themselves last. Okay, everybody else is taken care of and then yourself. So it was never for myself. But once I saw, I want to leave this world a better place than when I came in. Because leave, I have to. But to make a difference and go, yes. Regrets, no. Because... Whenever I woke up, I'm making a difference. For me, the immediate difference is my own family, okay? Because that is where it begins. I mean, I, you can't go around changing the world without changing your immediate family. And to me, the biggest difference is my daughter is a vegetarian and an almost a vegan. My son hardly eats any meat. My grandson is aware and he takes everyday peanut butter and jelly sandwich to school. But once in a way, he wants his pizza and he should be allowed because deprivation is never a good policy. Okay, my change has started here. I tell people what they do and whether they implement it is their free will. Was there ever a time before you went vegan or vegetarian that you thought, there's no way I could do that? Well, I can't think that because I had not thought of becoming. I just saw and I became. 
I just implemented it. So there was no thinking behind it. It was acting on what I saw. It was following up on something I saw and I never gave it a thought. There was no turning back. That's the way I am. Once I decide, there's no turning back. That's what I will go through with. So at 70 years old, most people I know in their 60s, they're on medications, they're diabetic or pre-diabetic or have some sort of cardiometabolic disease or something, uh, arthritis or whatever. Do you have any of those problems? No, so I have mild blood pressure, very, very mild. For a normal person, that may not be blood pressure, but since I always ran low blood pressure, my blood pressure would be like 60 by 100, 110. But now when I started getting 80 by 30, so my husband being a physician says, for your standard, that is 10 degrees above what you are normally. So that becomes high blood pressure for me. And so I take a small 0.25 milligrams of whatever the medicine is. Do you worry about salt or oil or do you, do you add those liberally to your foods or? Not oil. The, 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 the thing is like he says, if I, if I give up salt, I have to let go the medication, but I like my salt and you know what? I need to indulge somewhere. Okay. So aside of your salt addiction and the blood pressure that comes with that, is there anything else? No. No arthritis, diabetes, no, no. nothing. No, no, no. I do have one thing, and that is a frayed rotor cuff on my left shoulder. But it has nothing to do with anything but me. I always carry a big bag. It's like I'm carrying my whole house out of the house and back into the house. So that, and it was always on the left shoulder. And the, the orthopod said, that is the reason I've got a frayed rotor cuff. This is what he told me. It is like a rope which is there on your shoulder and it is the edges of the rope that are frayed. That is what I have, but no, no, no arthritis. No osteoporosis? Mm -hmm. No, in fact, my bone density being so small boned is fantastic. Why do you think some people might quit being vegan? One of the reason is that you, then you're not totally convinced within your own mind, right? If you're going back, then you're not that convinced. And I think everybody, everybody fails sometimes. So what? Try again? That's so true. Relapse is always a part of treatment. Mm -hmm. It happens to all of us mm -hmm. because we are humans. Mm -hmm. What's a favorite quote? Do you have any favorite quotes? Uh, my quote, the thing is, it's, this is my own thing. And this is what I tell myself every morning. The day I close my eyes, I should know when I came to know, whatever I came to know, I did the right thing. When I was made aware of it. I mean, I didn't do anything wrong on purpose. Should know on my deathbed that to the best of my ability, I did the right thing. You know a lot of other vegans? No, not here. <laughs> I have a neighbor. And she is into a lot of health and oils and pilates, but it just does not get into their head that you don't need to be a meat eater to have all that strength. Some people say it's a good idea to have support from other vegans occasionally, but I guess your husband is probably all the support you need. Yeah, and why do you need a support? Is it that hard? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I have some friends who say, I would go vegan if my wife would. You know, they, it's like it, they depend on their wife to do it. I can't help but think about that, you know. Yeah, but I disagree with that because when you want something bad enough, you will do it. That is how we are. We are capable of it. You don't have to put that burden on your wife. You don't have to put a burden on anybody else. I know people who are eating meat all the time. They can put their burden that, oh, because we are at their house, we, we can eat meat. At the same time, I can say, I'm putting my burden of going into temptation because they are eating, you know, and I was born a non-veg. It doesn't work that way. Is it kind of taboo 
in India for people to not eat dairy? No. So it's so people are okay with that. People are okay with that, but the thing is, everything all day, like in, whether you're having rasgulla, whether you're having gulab jamun, whether you're having ladu, whether you're having the Indian ice cream called kulf, everything is made of milk. If you were to speak out against that in India, would you get a lot of resistance or hate? Or could it be that maybe people are just ignorant to the detriment it causes to their health and the animal, and maybe they're willing to listen to it? Do you think they are willing to listen to it, or do you think there's a lot of resistance in India? To be very honest, I think they're quite blase about it. Because the way, in my opinion, again, I will never say I'm right, but in my opinion, I think the society setup is such that a lot of importance is given to education, the social strata, the caste system. And seriously, people really don't care what they eat. So it doesn't matter what I tell them. It's not going to make a difference to most. Some people, yes, like my nephew, my brother's son. He is one of those very unusual person and so is his partner. She is uh, happy, satisfied with what they have, environmentally conscious, vegetarians, not vegans, because again, like I said, key and things like that. But he works a lot for the environment. They, uh, he made a whole uh, villa in Ali, uh, a small island of Bombay called Alibagh but he didn't use anything else but the discarded ship containers and he insulated them. So he doesn't use a whole lot of air conditioning even though it's very hot. He has installed it. Again, like I say, moderation counts, you know. So he has installed it for people's comfort and all, but as far as possible, they try not to do that. They make products which are uh, your deodorants, uh, insect repellents, kombuchas, but everything is planet free. And for cotton t-shirts, when you have really good cotton t-shirts, there's nothing to beat it. I've got so many. I always wear it when I'm exercising. You said it's planet free? Planet friendly. Friendly, friendly. But he's not vegan yet. No. Do you think it would be something you could ever find yourself advocating that this is a better way? The thing is, when you want to advocate something, you can do it for one day and walk away. You have to be very persistent in what you are doing. And I go to visit them. It really wouldn't work that way. There has to be incentive. It has to be a persistent thing you're telling someone for a long period of time. Because food is one of the basic needs of a human being or anybody and I, you are trying to change that and in 15 days there is no way I can succeed. Do you find when you visit these relatives or friends uh, are, are some of them in less health than you? Oh death, all of them, hmm. all of them. My cousin and I we are exactly same age I think she is six months younger than me she has all kinds of autoimmune disease. She is obese, grossly obese. I mean, there's always something going on. Gums have receded. She's got to take off all her teeth and make dentures. But... And the only thing she's doing different is probably dairy and... Dairy and meat also, right? Because yeah. we are meat eaters. So, yes, meat. Last time when I was there, I told her, I said, do not have two eggs in the morning, what for? And she said, no, 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 my doctor has told me I need my protein and all. Anyway, my health is so bad. I said, your health is bad because you're eating two blooming eggs in the morning. Let's talk about food now. Like, what is a typical day like for you? When you get up in the morning, you said your, your husband makes a smoothie. You're kind of getting away from that because you don't really like to yeah, I mean, I will. The, today he's, he told me, he said, there's some left, I'll, I'll, I'll have that. Um, in the afternoons... You don't have a routine? 
now I will only eat when I am hungry and I think now my body clock is set in such a way like I'll have I'll nibble a little bit in the afternoon some fruit something but it's not a meal at all uh, morning is my smoothie then at night yes that is the time I have my full dinner so last night I had made a, what is called khichuri it is lentil and rice they're cooked together you saute garlic cumin seeds, a little bit of green chili, onions and then you put this lentil and uh, rice in it and cook it. And from the previous day I had my uh, vegetables which was all mixed vegetables I had made and I ate that for my dinner then I when I'm watching TV I'll snack on something which is normally like cashew nuts. I took a little bit of those chips and my Cheerios. <laughs> I, I just need that little sweet at night, you know, and I'm at a loss as to what I should be eating. You ever try to do anything with dates for the sweetness? Oh yeah. Uh, so I, I sometimes will have dates with uh, walnuts. I like that. And at, in Trader Joe's, I got those uh, little uh, peanut butter balls with, uh, filled with jelly and coated in coconut. I had that. Last time I was here, you mentioned making something and you were really excited about it. I'm trying to remember what it was. It was like, I think you might've used soy or something. It was like maybe some sort of cheese. Oh yeah. What oh, I that? know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, from the soy granules, you get it. I'll show you the packet. So you get these packets and you soak it overnight and drain the water in the morning because granules it, soy granules and uh, and i cooked it exactly like uh, you would uh, cook your uh, chili so you heat the oil you put your ginger garlic and then you put your cumin turmeric coriander powder what else did i put a little bit of chili powder saute that put lots of onions saute it and then you get, I had the tomato cans, you know, I, I, I blend it in the mixie and I uh, put the onions, then I sort it for a while, put tomatoes in it, put this and pressure cook in the Instapot for about three hours and it doesn't taste, you, you won't be able to make out the difference between that and your mints. What's your mints? It, it is good. I like it. <laughs> so what are soy granules? Is it like little small? I'll show you. So this is Nutella soy granules. Can make your uh, mince meat soak overnight. You can cook it like mince meat with onions. It's hard to figure out whether it is meat or not. If you put tomato, can, onions, garlic, ginger, turmeric, cilantro powder, cumin powder and a little bit of chili powder. So you saute those things? Saute those things and these are soaked overnight. But then you cook it in uh, Instapot under high pressure for about three hours. And you can add your peas to it, potatoes to it. You can eat it with bread, make sandwiches. You can make chili and put it over your vegan sausage. A whole bunch of things. Are there any dishes that you are able to replicate that are normally non-vegan? Mm, like um, scrambled eggs. So uh, we, uh, I take semi-firm tofu and break it up into crumbles. I take uh, cumin seeds and crack them in the oil, put a little bit of uh, green, chili, green chilies and let it cook because otherwise it's too hot. Then I put uh, turmeric. Turmeric powder, you know, it gives yellow color to the thing. Then uh, onions. Then I put the soy crumbles in it with some salt. Keep on sauteing thing, all the water is gone. Sprinkle it with cilantro and you serve it. You can't make out the difference between a scrambled egg and a soy. It's good. I wish we had time for me to do a little cooking show with you. Yeah, that is good actually. Yeah, it's better sometimes to show people how you can do rather than say do, do, do. But you gave me enough information where I might be able to replicate it. <laughs> yeah. Bit, yeah, it's it's quite simple. 
You mentioned lentils a lot. Uh, do you do black beans or any other kind of beans? Oh or no, legumes? beans are different from lentils. Yeah, any other kind of legumes? I don't know what you would call it in English, but masoor dal. Then we have the gram flour, uh, gram dal. Then we have moong dal. Then we have tur dal. We have urad dal, masoor dal. So there are two types. One is brown, one is yellow, masoor dal. And you can make so many different things because each has its own consistency and taste. Do you enjoy any grains or greens? Do you try to, like some people say the salad is the most important meal of the day. What about you? Do you feel like a salad is a pretty big deal? We cook vegetables. See, so like even asparagus, if you just chop it up and I use little oil with the turmeric and chili powder and salt and you just saute it for a little while and then you know the Indian bread I was talking about that you roll it out and so many vegetables, okra, eggplant. In fact I make uh, this thing, lasagna with eggplant and uh, lentil because I just bake the eggplant, make it slice, oil it a little bit because eggplant does not cook otherwise. Slice it up and bake it layer of eggplant, layer of uh, vegan cheese and uh, the pinto beans that you get, the Mexican ones, a layer of that, again an eggplant and you bake it all together with uh, some uh, uh, sauce. So you don't eat a lot of greens it sounds like. Greens, you know, like romaine or mixed greens or arugula or... Oh yeah, we do, we do, we, we eat arugula and all but Salad is part of dish. I mean, it is part of the meal, but never the meal itself. Because there is always some greens have its protein, soluble fiber. Some people I've met that aren't vegan at all, they say they hate beans. Isn't that weird? <laughs> that is weird because I love beans. <laughs> and, and I think when they say beans, they mean all legumes. But maybe they're just not familiar with the variety and the different ways they can be prepared and seasoned. And I think the, the, the thing is the seeds. But then you know what, with beans, the, the 15 bean packet that I get from Walmart, I hope Walmart doesn't think I'm advocating them. No, I'm not. <laughs> but they have their own little seasoning packet there. So all you are doing is soaking it overnight, draining the water off because you know that does, because beans tend to cause a lot of gaseousness. But if you soak it overnight, drain the water and cook it the next day with, uh, I, I cook with vegetable broth and I do nothing, just let it boil for, uh, pressure cook it for three hours and I empty this sachet of uh, seasoning in it. It's perfect. And that sounds pretty easy. It's very easy. Yeah. So I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be too hard because some of these recipes that you're doing, a little, little on the complicated side. It, it is, it is, <laughs> it is. Yeah, if you don't know the spices, then, well, by the virtue of my birth, I do know these spices. But if you don't know, even my daughter, she gets so confused with the lentils because she'll always say oh, one is like the other. Now, which is what? Yeah, some are smaller, some are bigger, red. Red, some are brown, some are black. Green. <laughs> Green. When you removed meat, eggs, and dairy gradually over the years, did you find yourself discovering a lot more options or did you feel limited? You, you start finding because necessity is a mother of invention. So when it is very necessary, you'll start inventing stuff. Like this eggplant parmesan was my own invention. I was like, what do I put here? And I said, well, let me put the beans. Turned out good. Was that egg recipe your own invention or was that something you found online? Or? No, that is certainly not my invention. Now, I must have found it somewhere. Do you have any like resources, like uh, certain cookbooks that you really enjoy that you would like to share that you know, people might want to check out for these kind of recipes? Honestly, no. Hmm. You just kind of... I just kind of... My brain just goes somewhere and I say, okay, I will do it. Sometimes it turns out to be great, sometimes not so good. But the moment it becomes, you're following us, especially for people who are beginning, 
a certain guideline is good, but don't make it tedious. And sometimes the recipes have their own way of taking you on a path of never-ending cooking. And then people say, okay, fine, I'm so fed up, I give up. Do you have an instant pot? I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, so maybe instant pot is a really good staple to have in the kitchen. So, so tell me what kind of staples are good to have in a kitchen. Just give people ideas of the kind of tools they might enjoy using in the kitchen to, to make it easier. So in, Instapot is definitely a must if you have a couple of pots, you know, when you're making khichdi and all, you don't want Instapot because you still want to taste your rice and your lentil that is with it and all. So that. Then I uh, use a pan because uh, sometimes uh, instead of the hash browns from the market, what I do is I, uh, I put my potatoes in the microwave mash it up, put bread in it with salt, chili powder and make it into nice little small rounds and I put it on the pan, just shallow fry, I mean you don't need to put a lot of oil in it, just grease the pan, put it on, flip it on the other side, it is delicious. Russet potatoes or those little red potatoes? Red potatoes. Because the red potatoes have a little more uh, sticky uh, uh, consistency. The russets will not turn into a patty. You ever use Japanese sweet potatoes for anything? Oh yeah, I eat it by itself. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I like them. Yeah, those are great. So I wonder, do you think we'll ever see a vegan world? Sometime, maybe. I never say never. What do you think a vegan world would look like? I think it would be a world where animals are happy and so are people. Maybe doctors will be a little sad. Do you have any last minute words that you would like to share? Anything encouraging or, or anything that we didn't touch on? Don't go all the way initially. Take baby steps towards your goal. I think it's the mammoth task for a person who's non-veg to turn veg overnight. So if you take baby steps, eliminating stuff from what you are eating, your body will tell you how good you are feeling and that it should be an incentive enough to, for people to be vegan. But just baby steps or if you fail, don't get discouraged. That is what it is. Come back to it. You don't have to be hard on yourself. Why might it be important for others to be vegan? Well, no man is an island. To save the planet, to be kind to our animals, and most importantly to ourselves, it takes a cumulative effort. My one person's effort is not going to do a whole lot of good if I do not have the backing of my other fellow men. We all need to contribute. How you contribute, when you contribute is your own choice. Now that you're vegan, do you, could you ever be with somebody who isn't vegan like if if your husband said, uh, you know what, I'm going to start eating animals again. Would that interfere with your relationship, you think? I think I would be a little sad about it. But if that is his choice, then that, that is the choice he has made. But I don't have to say that because now he is becoming a non-veg, I have to be. No. And you wouldn't let that get in the way of your relationship? No, why would I? Because I do believe in everybody's freedom. So, no, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't. I mean, I would be sad because he's hurting himself, planet, animals, everybody. But he has made a choice. You can't go against somebody's free will. How much free will are we really exerting with so much social influence and being raised in a culture where they're normalizing something so barbaric and grotesque. Is it really free will when you've been brought up to do this, it's just like normal? Are they really exerting any free will or are they just doing something that is business as usual or they're just following orders? So that is where Jeff, you come into play because yes, Meat industry, dairy industry, these are big giants with a lot of lobbying going on. Okay, they don't want to kill their business. The green is too tempting for them. Showing people which you're doing, 
and educating them. There is nothing like educating and, and opening someone's horizon to what it is. In due course of time, people make their choices. Maybe we can't change the world, but even if you do 50% of it, 50% changes and it is, it's a domino effect. Those 50% also have their near and dear ones whom they change in turn. And who knows, like you said, maybe one day the world will be vegan. Can you speak in your native language? To a degree, yes, I can. <laughs> yes. Is, there anything, is there anything you could say to people in your native language that would be maybe some encouraging words to help them understand what we're talking about here and why it might be important for them to consider it. Oh my God, you put a tall question. So I am not good with my, because I was a Jesuit since the age of 21, I think, since we migrated and I've not spoken. So this is a very tall order that you have given me. Uh, but I would say that, Jivu che to sari rite jivo ne, koi ne sukam dukha pine jivanu. Ghanu che khavanu, bhaji che, dal che, lentil che khai lo. Janavan ne sukam maro cho. Ne ap tamara jan ne sukam eran karo cho. I said, live well. Why hurt yourself? Why hurt the planet? Why hurt the animals? There are enough lentils, there is enough uh, vegetarians, and there is enough beans and legumes, nuts. Eat that. Be kind to yourself and in turn to everybody else around you, including the planet and the animals. So this is my refrigerator, my grapes, chia seeds, cherries, golden berries, they call it. Of course, my papaya. This is what I was talking about, what we had. It looks gross now because we ate last night. <laughs> but this is my rice and lentil. So a lot of greens. My baby corn, my shrooms. These are, Akil loves them, but these are uh, black reddish I got from farmer's market. See the black? I peeled it off, but they're black reddish. And they're, the taste is much sharper than the red ones. I find it a little bit pungent for my liking, but Akil loves it. And I've got my bok choys. Broccolini and then I had zucchini to add baby zucchinis. I don't know what they are. But we love those baby zucchinis. But they're very nice. Just put it in the pan, salt, pepper. Or I like these vegetables sauteed in chili lime. I love this chili lime flavor. Trader Joe's. Oh, it's a delicious. Huh. What was this sweetener here? This is jaggery. You call it jaggery. It is all natural sugar. Inside of that, I make pickle from it. This tortilla looking thing, you said that... It's called made. roti. In, it's Indian roti. It was really good. I've already eaten half of it. Yeah. This is my homemade pickle because it has all the... It looks black, but actually it is balsamic vinegar, jaggery, salt, a little bit of chili powder, and whatever dry fruits, and I cut up lemons. And this is like 10 years old. What do you mean that's 10 years old? That's how long you've had this jar? It, no, this is a small one. It lasts forever, and you know, you get all your dry fruits and everything. I've got dates, everything in that. You made this. Yeah, it is like a condiment with your uh, food. It really adds flavor. We call it achar. It is like a pickle. So you can see the different things which are there. This is dried apricot, lemon. I just chop it up and put it in there. I've got so many things. I've got dates, everything in here. So. And you just kind of mixed it all? With the jaggery. Did you cook it at all? Or? No, 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 no. Jaggery preserves the dates, huh. raisins. Whatever dry fruits we have left, which we haven't consumed, goes in there. And I have a huge jar. And I like this because it has no oil. And it is quite tart and good. 
What would I use to eat that with? Like just now I put jaggery for you in, in, in this, yeah, right? Yeah, jaggery, but what about this? Yeah, so uh, the thing is when I'm eating my mixed vegetables mm -hmm. with my tortilla, yeah. and then I mix a little bit of this. It's a sweet, sour. So just get a little piece right here. Yeah, that is lemon peel. But I, I cut the whole lemon and put it okay. in. But you, you just take a little bit at a time. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, the more I chew it, the more flavors. A lot of flavors. Yeah, wow. but you, you don't eat that much. You know, mm -hmm. just take a little bit with your, with your food. And totally different than just the jaggery by itself. Yes. What did you say about this tortilla again? So it is multigrain flour. You get uh, it is called Sujata's multigrain. It has flowers all mixed together, and then you make a dough. And I've got that rolling p roller over there. I mm -hmm. do it with the rolling pin. Put it on the pan. But I have a bag. I'll show you. This is the dough I use: barley, chana dal, ragi, maize, oat, soy, wheat. And then you make it into a nice dough. Break it into small bowls. And this is my rolling pin. And this is the board I roll it on. So you put the small thing here and then I just go around and round. It will automatic. At least I'm so used to it, it turns into a round shape on its own. Put a pan on the stove mm -hmm. and you put it one side, cook it a little bit, flip it. Cook that side thoroughly, flip it back, and put a nice clean napkin on it, balloons into a nice little ball. That's the time it's done, ready to get out. I got it from the Indian shop. This as well as the other thing, they're all from the Indian shop. This is called, pic this is a pickle actually, we call it achar. How would you spell that? A-C-H-A-R. It's an Indian thing. Even if you go for an Indian buffet restaurants, they will give you a mango pickle and uh, lime pickle and everything else but that is uh, soaked in oil to preserve it mm -hmm. i don't use that i use vinegar and jaggery and all the pieces i just cut a bag of lemon and i put it in so it, it's just last it's 10 years old now this bottle is 10 years old no that is part <laughs> of the bottle oh is it the, fermented also what fermented no, it's not. Mm -hmm. But uh, the vinegar and the lemon juice will hold it. And all I do is if I have something spare, I will put it in. That's a Nutritious, job. yep. Wow. It looks ugly, but it is tasty. A char? A char. It has to be a glass char. Okay. Because you've got your acidity of your lemons, you've got your balsamic vinegar. And to preserve it, it has to be in some a glass container, not plastic. It will eat up your plastic. Mm -hmm. And what kind of ratios? Does, does it matter? It does matter. So this is just me and my husband. This was in Las Vegas. That was my uh, Akil's niece's wedding. Mm -hmm. This is Cabo in Mexico. And this is the lion cub in South Africa. He was fine. This is in Bhutan. And look at that. That's a wedding picture. That's a classic one right there. You look like a genie. And then over here you got all the kids. Yes. But see, this is what I mean. Even the dolphin. This is in Cabo. They have these dolphins. And you can swim with them. They bring you up. See how he's got the dolphin's fin? Yeah. What impressed me here I mean, if she wants, look at the amount of teeth. But look what she's doing, letting him kiss. When she got Akil, she came at a breakneck speed and just dived in. And Akil is a pretty good swimmer. And he was like wanting some air because he went down, you know, he had not expected it. And so I, I was like, no, 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 be careful. Do not put Kai. But by that time, Kai was already there. I was surprised how she swam and she waited till Kai went off her. That was a rescued dog by my daughter. She was a wild one. I mean, it was just difficult to train her. But you know what? With the child around, this dog has never, ever done anything to hurt the child. And she, she was big enough to knock you down, Jeff. My daughter, Akil and my, my son is here. This is when he was just born. 
That's a good picture there too. Yeah. So many good ones. He played a very important role in mallowing our keel down, you know. That is our Disney cruise. See that mother and son there? Oh, I was impressed with those Disney guys. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a pirate night. This is, I think, the Disney Island. Yeah, Getaway Cat. In Bahamas, it, this is a private Disney Island. That's my grandson's caricat in Orlando. That's my mom. She's kissing his hand. We did his fourth birthday in India. We had gone for my friend's daughter's wedding. A tongue competition. We figured out mine was the longest. <laughs> because I could uh, touch the tip of my nose. <laughs>